Amen. Let's have some church this morning as the Spirit of the Lord is moving in this place. You are welcome in the house of the Lord this morning. Welcome once again to New Direction Church International. I'm Apostle Jarrell Beard. It is a blessing to be here with you this morning as we enter into the presence of the true and living God. Listen, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, somebody. God has been blessing you all week long. It hasn't been for nothing. It's because he has a plan in store for your life. Wherever you are, lift your hands all over the place. Give God the praise that he deserves. He is an awesome God. He's a mighty God. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. And God is not finished working in your life. Hallelujah. Listen, if you love the Lord and he heard your cry, go ahead and lift your hands up and give him praise wherever you are on this morning because God is still good regardless of your situation. Come on, somebody. Yeah, give him praise, honor, and glory this morning. God has been so good to you. He brought you this far so that you can lift up his name so you can walk in destiny and purpose and you can conquer every situation that is set before you. Come on, give God some praise for Jesus Christ our deliverer, our savior, our Lord and our God on this morning. Elevate him and bless him in this place for he is the great and mighty God. Hallelujah, somebody. You gotta bring your A game this morning. Bring your praise to the table. God's about to do something in your life that you have never, ever, ever seen before. And now is the day to give him praise on credit. It's time to Shabbat him. It's time to lift up the El Shaddai and bless his name. He's the almighty God. There's none like him, ladies and gentlemen. I came to introduce the song and present to the others the almighty, true and living God, the creator of the universe, the one whose heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. That's the God we love of this morning. Come on and praise him because we serve a big God. Hallelujah. He's a big God. He's a big God. He's a big God. He's a big God who's doing big things regardless of big trouble. Wherever there's big trouble, there's a bigger God. Come on, lift him up in this place. Yeah, God's not finished with you yet. He's still working out that Jeremiah 29 and 11 plan in your life. So come on, clap your hands wherever you are. Lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, 60 seconds. Come on, it's working, it's working, it's working. Lift them up. Come on, take it higher this morning. It's working, you can't see it. Like a seed underneath the earth. It's taking root first, germinating so it can sprout up on the outside. It's about to sprout in your life. Come on, it's working, it's working. I know it don't look like it, but I promise you, it's about to work out on your behalf. Lift him up. Come on, 10 more seconds and we'll shift. Clap your hands right where you are. Turn that living room into a sanctuary. That kitchen into a house of praise. Transform that bedroom into a sanctuary. Wherever you are, Usher in his presence with your praise on this morning. Hallelujah. Your new season. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Father, there's something that you're doing that we don't really understand. Underneath the surface, behind the curtain. Concealed in a mystery, you're working, you're working, you're working, you're working. Outside of every circumstance, regardless of every block, besides every challenge, you're working, you're working, you're working, you're working. You're a God who works all things together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. Work out a plan, God, that only you can masterfully 
do in our lives on today. We are more than grateful that you're working it out. You're working it out. You're working it out on our behalf. I thank you that the end of the story is better than the beginning of the story and the latter day is better than the former and the end is greater than the beginning. I thank you, God. Hallelujah. That where I start doesn't mean where I finish. I thank you that Jesus came, but that wasn't it. He died, that wasn't it. He bled, that wasn't it. He died, that wasn't it. But he's, he, he rose, that wasn't it. The end story says he's coming back again. And I thank you that the end is greater than the beginning because he's coming back once and for all, for peace once and for all, joy once and for all, salvation once and for all. God, I thank you that the latter is greater than the former. Now, by the spirit of the living God, somebody who's had a, a former uh, dysfunctional week, I pray now by the power of the Holy Ghost that through this word and through this experience, the latter portion of their week this Sunday morning will be better than the former portion of their week, God, in the name of Jesus, that this word sets them where they need to be. Speak life in the name of Jesus. Breathe life. In the name of Jesus, may your presence cultivate life and hope in the name of Jesus. Now resurrect the preaching anointing in me, O God, that I may prophetically preach the word of the Lord with profound wisdom and insight, with clarity and truth in the name of Jesus. Gather together all of my faculties and the creative and genius that you've placed on the inside of me by the power of the Holy Ghost and use it now for your glory. Shoot me out as an arrow in your quiver. Oh, hallelujah. That I may be who you designed me to be in this moment and hour. That lives may be changed. Souls saved. And hearts on fire for Jesus. I thank you in Christ's name. Let the church say amen. Give God a praise right now. Come on, give him a praise right now. Wherever you are, give him a praise right now. Once again, welcome to New Direction Church International. My pastor Jarrell Beard. And it's good. It's good to be in the word with you all this morning. I want to invite your attention, if you will, to Psalms 27. I hope you have a Bible. I want you to go to Psalms 27 on this morning. We're going to put in verse 11 through 14. And I need you to put a marker in Galatians chapter 6. That's Psalms 27 and Galatians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Psalms is in your Old Testament, Galatians is in your New Testament. For this word that I have for you is consistent through and through the Bible, through and through the counsel of God. This word is life for you all this morning. Amen. Psalms 27 and Galatians chapter 6. I'm going to give you just a few more seconds to get there in your writing and your Bibles. We want to all board this plane and take off at the same time. I pray you've been blessed by the presence of the Lord in your life. Amen. Psalms 27 and verse 11. Teach me your ways, O oh Lord. Lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries. <laughs> For false witness has risen against me and such as breathe out violence I would have lost heart. One version of the Bible says, I would have fainted. Unless I believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait. I say of the Lord. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in the due season we shall reap if we don't 
lose heart. One version says, if we faint not. My subject this morning is don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. There is a great deal of help in hope. If you can keep your hope alive, you can weather every storm. If you can keep your hope alive like Joseph in a pit, surely, somehow, if it's unconventional, you coming out. Do I have a witness in this place? Whether a pit and slavery or a prison, when you have hope fighting with you, when your left hand is faith and your right fist is hope, you can fight like you've never fought before. Swinging the right things at what's coming against you. To come out of every circumstance and come into everything that God has in front of you. Because if you can swing your faith and uppercut with your hope, come on in somebody. A victory is yours. A victory is yours. A victory is yours. I came to tell somebody a victory is yours. My Bible tells me that if I can swing with my faith and uppercut with my hope, I'm coming out on top. I'm coming out more than a conqueror. I'm coming out. I'm coming out better than I went in. And my circumstances are going to have to shift because my faith and my hope is the inertia and the momentum that's pushing me through through my circumstance. Regardless of how hard the wind blows, regardless of how difficult the challenge gets, and regardless of how many pieces of the puzzle that I have to press through to keep putting the vision together, when I have hope, I'll stay in there until every piece fits the way it's supposed to fit. Who am I preaching to in this place? It doesn't matter how long it takes. If I hope, I can come out. If I hope, I can come in. If I hope, I can stay focused. If I hope, if I hope, shout hope. If I hope, shout hope. Shout hope, shout hope. If I hope, y'all ain't in my church this morning. Shout hope if I hope. If I hope, I'll make it. We're living in uncertain times and it's becoming more difficult to determine who you can and who you cannot trust. Like David, many of us have become aware that we have more adversaries than allies. We have more adversarial type of situations being thrust at us than we have more ally type situations and circumstances and settings being thrown at us. The climate is adversarial like it was for David. We have more trouble than we have peace. We have more warfare than we desire. And everywhere we look, when we're trying to make a friend, it seems like it's becoming a foe. She's becoming a foe. He's becoming a foe. My brothers and sisters, it's not unusual to live with unpredictable circumstances, unpredictable surroundings, and unpredictable Outcomes. Don't think it's strange when these fiery trials come to try your faith. Yes, yes. Come on, and it's going to be tried. And when you come out, you're going to come out as pure gold. Yes, yes, yes. See, when you go through unpredictable situations, when you do, it is common to feel threatened. Yes, yes, like even the shadows on the wall pose a threat. Your mind starts playing tricks on you. Remember a song back in the day, N.W.A. I sit alone in a four-corner cell staring at candles. Because his mind was playing. You can start going through so much that your mind start. Does she like me? Does he like me? Can I make it? Will I survive? Will I? I think we're in a climate where, where our minds are beginning to Take us to places that we don't want to go. Somebody shout, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I don't want to become that person. I don't want to become negative. I don't want to start blaming everybody. I don't want to justify my anger. I don't want to become that kind of person. I got to fight with my hope to stay positive. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody already. See, this can leave you, my brothers and sisters, with a troubled heart. A troubled heart. A troubled heart. The heart 
my brothers and sisters, is known as the place of spiritual activity. It is known as the place of consciousness. It's known as the place of emotion. My heart is everything. When God looked upon the earth and he saw that all the thoughts of man's heart was evil, he totally destroyed it and stored it all over again because the heart is the centerpiece of your character. It's the centerpiece of who you are. And sometimes our heart can begin to grow hardened, darkened, and isolated, troubled, confused, and desire to give up on it all. And I came with an encouraged message this morning for somebody whose, heart, whose mind is playing tricks on them and whose heart is becoming separated from the will of God, separated from your joy, separated from your peace. I came this morning to admonish you and to encourage you. Don't you lose heart. Oh my God, I feel like I'm preaching to somebody in this place. A troubled heart is one that is filled with concerns about tomorrow. Concerns about survival and concerns about the brightness of your future. Mm. And sometimes the hope that we have is the hope that God will bring us through. Sometimes all we have to lean on, all that we have to stand on, those of us who trust in the Lord and lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him, sometimes all we have is our hope in Jesus. Can I preach it like an old school preacher in here? My, my faith is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. Sometimes all you have is your hope in Jesus. All you have is thoughts that he'll bring you through. All you have is visions that he's going to be your way maker. Sometimes all you have as evidence that you can get up in the morning is that you get up in Jesus and that you lie down in Jesus and that you go to work in Jesus and you pay your bills in Jesus. Sometimes all you have to hold on to is a hope in God. And for that reason, I came to tell somebody this morning, for that reason, you must keep your hope alive. Somebody shout, I got to keep my hope alive. I, I got to keep my hope in God. I got to keep my focus in it. I can lose my house. I can lose my boo. I can lose my finances. I can almost lose my mind. But one thing I cannot lose no matter what is my hope that God is good all the time. And all the time God is good. And that he's a way maker. He's a mind regulator. He's a burden bearer, a heavy load sharer. He's the God of grace, the God of my salvation. He's the God of my hope, the God of my future. He's my fighter, my shield, and my buckler. I got to believe he's a mighty battle axe. He's a shelter in the time of storm. I just got to believe that my God is a healer. My God is a prophet. I got to, I, I got to believe. I got to believe. I got to believe. I have no choice but to believe that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want that he make me lie down in green pastures and he lead me beside the still water and he restored my soul. I must believe, I must believe that he anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over. I must believe that yea, that I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil falls out or with me, I got to, I got to believe, I got to believe <laughs> that God is with me so that when people start disappearing like balloons popping in the sun's heat, I got to know he's a God that stays with me no matter what. Somebody say he's with me no matter what. Here we are, a man who is not unfamiliar with contention. David, we know him in the beginning as a shepherd boy who became the king of Israel. He is no stranger to trouble. He is no, tra no stranger to conflict. He is no stranger to weariness. He is the writer of Psalm 27. Psalm 27. It is a historical psalm in its content. In his, in his Christian historicity, this is the very psalm that says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? 
when my enemies, my, my foes came to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. The host may encamp around me. My heart will not fear. The war may be all around me. In this will I be confident. This is the psalm that says, one thing that I desire, and that right well, that I shall dwell in the house of the Lord and behold the, the beauty in his temple. This very psalm, Psalm 27, is the one where we quote, when my mother and father forsake me, the Lord shall lift me up. What a mighty honor it is to pull contextuality and revelation out of Psalm 27 this morning. That psalm that pulls you through. That psalm that helps you get up. See, you can't write a psalm like this unless you've been down. You, you can't write an encouragement like this unless your mother and father has really forsaken you. Oh, my God. And so here we are in Psalm 27. And David is writing, has written this psalm after a season upon season upon season upon season, upon climates of challenges, frustration, adversarial nature, trouble, and issues on every side. See, for David, his destiny eclipsed his normalcy. His normalcy was to be a shepherd boy on the backside of the mountain raising up sheep. But one day, a prophet by the name of Samuel came to his house and, and his destiny eclipsed his normalcy because they called him out of the field of the desert with the sheep to come get in line to be anointed as the next king of Israel and after David's father allowed all his sons to go through the requirement checklist to be king only to forget about David then Samuel will say do you have another then David will come out of the field to have his normalcy eclipsed by his destiny. Sometimes the reason you're facing challenges is because your normalcy has been eclipsed by your destiny, meaning that your destiny has come to pass, meaning that it's time now for you to shift from being normal, oh my God, to being unusual. It's time for you to shift into the anointing, shift into the plan of God, and sometimes destiny eclipses your normalcy, and destiny brings with it Challenges that you never saw in your normalcy. I feel like talking to somebody. Because all David had to fight <laughs> before he was anointed as king, all he had to fight was lions and bears. But once he got anointed as king, he found himself fighting a Goliath. On behalf of all of Israel. That's a bigger fight than a, than, a, than a lion. That's a bigger fight than a bear. But the lion and the bear fight was preparation for the Goliath fight. And I came to tell you, even though your destiny eclipsed your normalcy, the battles you've been through in the past, the small ones, were nothing but preparation for what you're going through right now. So shout, I can handle it because I've already been through it. I can handle it because I've already been down. I can handle it because I've already been in some fights. I can handle this situation that I'm in and I don't have to lose my hope because I've already been in the boxing ring with change. I already been in the boxing ring with struggle. I already been in the boxing ring with rejection. I already been in the boxing ring with loneliness. And I came out better than I went in. I came out on top. And since I came out then, I'm coming out now. Who am I preaching to? I'm coming out with my head able shut up. I'm coming out with my head up. I wish I had somebody who say I'm coming out with my head up because I look to the hills from which cometh my help. All my help comes from the Lord. Your destiny can eclipse your normalcy. And in David's case, we must understand that David sought God's leadership when he realized that his destiny eclipsed his normalcy. For he says here in Psalms 27, he says, Teach me, O Lord, your ways and lead me in a smooth path. See, when greatness is on your life, when you found yourself shifted into purpose, every now and then, you got to understand, you need to go to God for leadership. 
Oh, I feel like talking to somebody right now. You're in a situation, but have you gone to God for leadership? You're in a transition, but have you gone to God for leadership? You're in a, you're in a downward spiral uh, with the possibility of an upward projection. But my question is, have you sought God for leadership? How to make it back up again? Who am I preaching to in here? David had at least enough sense in his head to go to God for his leadership. Now, you got to understand something. David had to go to God because David's path required battles. If you understand the story of David's life, my brothers and sisters, David was the king of war. His kingship, was, before he even got to being king, he was fighting. He was fighting against King Saul. He was fighting for King Saul, then ended up, in a sense, fighting against King Saul. He fought against the Philistines. He fought at Ziklag to get his family back. And when he got the throne, he fought with his sons. He fought with enemies all around him. David was the king of war. God would not allow you to be going through this if you, if you weren't a fighter on the inside. I think I need to say it again. God would allow you to face some of the things that you face if it wasn't for the fact that you're a fighter on the inside. There's a warrior on the inside of you. There's a fierce, relentless person that say, I shall live and not die. Who knows how to get up before the count of ten and get back into the race? Who am I preaching to up in here? The God knows that there's a person on the inside of you that will keep on running the race with a twisted ankle. God knows that there's a person on the inside of you that'll stay in the boxing match with a broken rib. God knows there's a person on the inside of you who will shoot of the buzzer beater with lit in your eye out past half court. Can I preach it? Like I feel it. God knows there's a fight like a girl. Why you rest on the inside of you who will Oh, God. I wish y'all was ready for me this morning. David's path required battles. By the time David turned over the mantle to Solomon, Solomon became known as the king of peace. Because his daddy had fought all his battles. Y'all going to make me preach metaphorically. Oh, God, all those battles that you've been fighting have not been for nothing. Your dad is about to bring you into a peace because he's been fighting them for you. And he's been fighting them with you. And your peace is about to come up on you. That's prophetic for somebody right now. Shout, I'm coming into my peace. Oh, my God. So now when we look at David's life as he is the writer of this psalm, we realize... That his preparation fighting the lion, his preparation fighting the bear, and his preparation fighting a giant by the name of Goliath was preparation for his platform. Everything you've been through has been preparation for where you're going to. All of your battles have been preparation for your greatness. Can I preach it like I feel it? Oh my God. All the pain is about the platform. All the pressure is about the platform. All the pieces that's been broken is about the platform that he's taking you to. And everything you faced up to this point has wired you to be dynamic at the next level. Y'all ain't gonna let me preach up in here. There's a dynamic ability that's been built on the inside of you that's got you ready for the next level. All you need is for the platform to show up. I feel like preaching up in here. You ought to pray, God, bring the platform. God, bring the opportunity. God, bring the open door. You have prepared me for it. Everything that I've been through has prepared me for the next level and the next dimension that you have. Everything I've been through, has, this cross has prepared me for my crown. Can I preach it? Jesus' cross prepared him for his crown. His crucifixion prepared him for his crown. And I came to tell somebody, your crucifixion has prepared you for your crown that God has in store for your life. Don't lose uh, heart. Don't lose heart. So as David considers his journey and what he is facing, he writes for us to understand that God is a way maker. Oh, my God. 
And as I told you previously, David sought God's leadership. I want you to seek God's leadership. You, you, you see, you're called to something and to somewhere great, but, 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 but you have no point of reference or no example to feed off of in the process. <laughs> See, you got to understand something. David was called to be king, but nobody else in his family was a king. Nobody, he had spent no time with kings around him. He was called to a high place that he had never seen before, and he didn't have a mentor. He didn't have an example of what it is to be a king. All he had was to look at a failed king by the name of Saul who was too scared to go out and fight in the battle against Goliath. What do you do when God calls you to do something that nobody else in your family has done? You go to God for your leadership. What do you do when God has you walking out of life and accomplishing things that nobody else in your family has gone through? You go to God for leadership. What do you do when you're going through hardships and persecutions and you know they're, atta they're attached to your calling and you have nobody in your family who understands your struggle because all they're doing is being comfortable with God? You go to God for leadership. So you've got to understand something. In David's journey, David's journey left him outnumbered and outmanned, but he was never overpowered. That's why he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He was on the run from Saul. He was fighting with the Philistines. Abimelech told on him where he was. He was going through all kinds of challenges. His son Absalom came up against him. So he was always outmanned. He was always outnumbered. But he was never overpowered. Why? Because the Lord was his strength. And I came to tell you, you might be outnumbered. Oh my God, you might be outmanned. You might have more bills than you have money to pay them. You may have more stress than you have peace to lay your head down at night. You may have more adversaries than you have allies, but you ain't never outpowered. You are never overpowered because you have the all uh oh uh oh you have the almighty who is on your side. He is the mighty God. So lift up your head, O oh ye gates, and be lifted up you everlasting doors that the king of glory I feel like preaching shall come in who is the king of glory the Lord mighty in battle who is the king of glory lift up your head on ye gates and be lifted up you ever I said lift up your head Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Lift up your head because your God is about to fight for you uh, he was never outpowered, ladies and gentlemen. He might have been outnumbered. He might have been outmanned. But he was so he was so not outpowered that they started singing songs. The nation and the people of Israel started singing songs about he was not ever overpowered. They said Saul has slain his thousands. But uh, David uh, has slain tens of thousands. Can I get a witness out here? All you're building is a testimony to the goodness of the Lord that the Lord brought you out. Your back was against the wall. They're going to say, who did it? God did it. Who brought her out? God did it. Who brought him out? God did it. How did she get back up? God did it. How did he do it? God did it. How did they make it? God did it. Oh God, I feel like I got to calm down. I, I got to calm down. How, 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 how? God did it. How did the walls of Jericho come down? God did it. How did Gideon win with 300 men against thousands of so Come on in here. God did it. How did Jesus resurrect from the grave? Y'all gonna make me preach. Shall God did it. Oh. Oh. 
Don't talk to me about enemies and adversaries. Don't tell me I'm not going to make it. Don't. I, you can't even tell me I'm going to die in it. You can't convince me that I'm going to burn in a fiery furnace. You can't convince me that I'm going to die in a lion's den. Come on in here, somebody. You can't convince me that because my shipwreck is over. Come on, Paul. You can't convince me because God did it. Same way he did it then. I wish I had somebody who wanted a word in this climate. He's a God that's doing it now. High five the couch and say he's doing it now. <laughs> I got to get to this word. So David here gives us an ideology, a construct, if you will, a paradigm, a model to follow on how not to lose heart. How not to lose heart. <laughs> David says, I would have fainted. Watch this now, my brothers and sisters. He said, unless I believe that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In other words, the first thing David did was he got a radical vision of God's victory. He said, if I would not have believed to see if I wouldn't have had a vision that he was going to bring me up, if, if, if I would not have, come on somebody, a radical vision that no matter how bad this is, my God is able, I would have given up if it wasn't for seeing myself coming out. Oh, y'all better hear me up in here. Y'all better hear me. If it wasn't for the fact that I knew God was able, I would quit. If, I, if it wasn't for the fact that I knew God was able, I would question whether or not I could make it. If it wasn't for the fact that I knew God was able. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. So he had to get a radical vision of God's victory. And the reason I call it a radical vision is because sometimes we are in some very ugly situations. And it takes some water walking faith like Peter to come out of some storms designed to destroy you. Can I preach it like I feel it? And sometimes you can't have a little subtle, cute approach to God. Every now and then you got to get radical in your faith and say, my God can turn this cancer around in the name of Jesus. My God can get me out of this legal matter. I don't care how bad it looks. You got to get a radical situation. You got to get a radical vision for a radical situation. And David was on the run from the king himself. You want to talk about somebody who had to have a radical vision. What do you do when the president out to get you? You got to know you can call God on the president. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. <laughs> he said, if I wouldn't have seen, I'd have fainted. I'd have lost hope. If I wouldn't have believed to see, oh my God, I would have lost hope. David says to us, my brothers and sisters, he says, then you must wait on the Lord. Shout, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord, wait, 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 wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. In other words, David is saying you have to practice patience for his provision and for his protection. I'm trying to help somebody in here. Even though you, it may be crunch time and even though you may find yourself in peculiar situations that seem to be more than you can bear and heavier than you can hold up under. You must be patient to wait on God's protection and wait on God's provision. David said all you got to do is wait and God will bring you out. Sometimes we get so anxious that waiting seems like the one thing we can't do. But if you, if you look at wait from a deeper perspective, that word wait, the concept of waiting, I think you can, you, can, you can maybe possibly wait until you see things come to pass. See, I hear the scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait, I say, on the Lord. See, when you wait on God, it is the ideology of not just sitting around fearful about what's going to happen, but it's about taking on a posture of belief 
that says God is able. So I'm anxiously, confidently waiting, not fear, fearfully, hopelessly waiting. Can I preach it like I feel it? That means I'm panting. I'm like, I know it's going to happen. I know God's going to do it. I wake up every day believing God's going to bring me out. It hadn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. The breakthrough hadn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. The deliverance hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. I'm not waiting around crying. I'm waiting, shouting. I'm giving him praise. I'm believing him because my breakthrough is on the other side of my belief. It's on the other side of my praise. It's on the other side of my hope. Who am I preaching to right now? Quit crying. Get up off your saw pillow and get your faith and your praise and shout and thank God for what he's already done. He's already done it. See, that's waiting on God. Hallelujah. When you can get a smile on your face when everything ugly is going on around you. When life tries to force you to frown. Hallelujah. But you speak back to life. A frown is nothing but a smile upside down. Just flip it. Come on, somebody. You got to flip it. You got to flip it. You got to flip it and get your smile back. Flip it and get your joy back. Because God's going to make a way for you. Come on, somebody. You got to practice patience. Just hold out until God does it. Keep believing year after year. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. Did you hear what I said? I'm not talking about a mic being in a microwave situation that's going to work itself out in six months anyway if you wasn't kicking and screaming. I'm talking about something you got to wait years on. I'm talking about Abraham who had to wait years to get his promise from God. Years to get his Isaac. The Bible said it took so long he had to hope against hopelessness. In other words, when, it, when, when everybody would have said it's hopeless, just, just quit, Abraham. Just quit. Just, man, you're old now. Just, just quit, man. Look at Seth. She, I mean, she's beautiful, but she's old. Come on. Come on. Come on, man. She, she, just quit. Just quit, Abraham. Just quit. Just quit, Felicia. Just quit. Just quit, Angela. Just quit. Just quit, Herb. Just quit. Just quit, you. Just quit. Just quit. Just quit. When life wants you to quit and circumstance wants you to quit and everybody wants you to quit and they don't want you to make it. They want you to give up and they want you to lay there and die. You got to jump up and shout, my God is able. You got to hope when don't nobody else hope. You got to wait on, I got to hurry up, I got to hurry up. He says, wait on the Lord. In other words, what he's telling you, <laughs> he says, wait on him, wait on him. In other words, expect a breakthrough. Write that down. Expect a breakthrough. Can I preach to somebody? Expect. Shout out. Expect a breakthrough from the Lord. Say it again. I expect a breakthrough from the Lord in my situation, with my family, with my finances, in my health. In my life, in my country, in my government, I expect a breakthrough in my vision, in my purpose, in my education, in my investments, in my articulation of who I am and whose I am. I expect a supernatural abundant overflowing breakthrough to happen in my situation shall I expect the anointing to show up oh y'all done got me started and show out I expect y'all gonna make me preach this Oh, I don't care what you say about me. I'm expecting something. 
I, I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what circulate. I don't care about the rumor mill. I don't care about the lies. I don't care. I don't care how they team up again. I don't care. I don't care. I'm expecting. I'll get right in your face and say, you just wait to see what God is going to do. Because my God is a... Woo, I feel an anointing on that. I feel an anointing on that. My God is able. And I will not succumb to somebody else's ideology of what I should and shouldn't do. Somebody else's prescription of where I am and where I am not. Do I have a witness up in here? I said it once, I'll say it again. They that wait upon the Lord shall get new strength. Your strength is about to come back to you. Don't worry about it. God will make sure you got the capacity to walk into the platform. Y'all going to make me preach it here. He says, so here's what you need to do. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. In other words, David said, find your strength. Oftentimes, in unpredictable circumstances and outcomes, the first thing we lose is the strength to keep going. The old folk call it the wherewithal. Modern day success psychologists call it willpower. <laughs> Certain behavioral psychoanalysts call it grit. Whatever you need to call it, find it and get it back. Y'all gonna make me preach it here. I just almost threw this microphone out of my hand. I don't care if it's grit. I don't care if it's willpower. I don't care if it's wherewithal. As long as the origin of it is God, you can get your power back. Because my scripture tells me, I, oh, y'all don't make me lose it, can do all things. Come here, come here, come here, come here. I want to tell you this up close. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Through Christ, come here, come here, come here, come here. Who? Hey, Shabbat makes me strong. Oh, y'all ain't going to hear me. Yeah, if I lose it, I can get it back. All I got to do is go back to my source and, be, and get my resource. Can I preach it like I feel it? If I run to the Lord, if I go to him, I realize that I can do all things through. Uh, and even if he doesn't bring me out, his grace will be sufficient. While I'm in. Y'all ain't ready for me this morning. So if the fire got to burn, as long as I come out unbruised, I'll go through the fire. If the lion got to roar, as long as I come out in one piece, I'll go through the den. If I, ooh, if the pit is dark and cold, as long as I come out, I'll sit in the pit. Who am I preaching to up in here? If I got to stay where I am until God decides different, I'll hang in there and find my strength to come out better. Who am I preaching to? Shall he ask in this morning? Shall he ask in the name of Jesus? Shall he ask for his strength? Shall he ask for his power? Shall he ask for his might? Shall he ask for his strong arm? Shall he ask for his Holy Ghost? Shall he ask for deliverance? Shall he ask for the breakthrough? Shall he ask for the victory? Shall he ask for the triumph? Shall he ask if 
you want it. Shout yes if you're blessed. Shout yes if he's able. Shout yes if it's your time. Shout yes for your season. Shout yes for your breakthrough. Shout yes for the Holy Ghost. Shout yes right now. Shout yes for the victory. Shout yes. <laughs> he said, you done lost your strength. <laughs> Go find it. <laughs> Mary and Martha <laughs> told Jesus about Lazarus that he was dead. And Jesus said, he's not dead. He sleep. They said, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. Jesus said, I am life. I am the resurrection. Stay with me here. He said, show me where you lay them. Y'all ain't hearing me up in here. You need to show God where your strength died. Show him where you dropped your vision. Show him where you gave up. Invite him into the broken place. Invite him into the dysfunction. Invite him into where you let go and where you gave in and where you died. And watch life. Y'all ain't with me. He shy. Show me where you laid. Show me where you gave up. Show me where death consumed. And I'll cause life to come back in the dead thing in your life. Show me what you're not working with. Show me and I'll take out, oh God, my spiritual defibrillators. And I will shock the heart of your dead thing. Back to life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'll bring it back from where you left it. Find your strength. David tells us, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. Then he says, wait. I said. King James, another version, he says, I say. That's because that's, that was the language back then. And this day and time, when your mama tells you something that she's sure of, when grandma tells you something she's sure of, when granddaddy says, he says, I said. When they mean what they say, they say, I said, go in there and put it down. I said, that means I mean what I say. That means that because I said it, it has power. So David says, wait, I said, on the Lord. Now that's an exclamation point in your word behind Lord. If you notice, he has said, wait, twice. <laughs> Y'all not hearing what I'm saying in here. And so he is emphasizing the importance of waiting. So in other words, David is saying, after you have waited. Keep waiting and don't waver. Okay, y'all ain't hear me up in here. Sometimes we feel like I've been waiting, 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 I've been waiting. We ain't gotta go do something, I've been waiting, I've been waiting. God said, okay, wait some more. Ephesians 6 said it's like this. After you have done everything to stand. Oh, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. He said, stand. 
And therefore, after you've done everything you can do to fix the problem, after you've done everything by faith, stand right there anyway. After you've waited and waited, And waited on God. And he hadn't showed up. And tears in your eyes. And you waited, you waited, you waited. You've been waiting on God. I've been waiting on God. I've been believing God for this. I've been believing God for that. But I'm still in the after. You waited until you can't wait no more. David says, because it worked for him, wait some more. Because this we know, my brothers and sisters. He is a present help in the time of trouble. If you waited and waited and waited and waited and believed God and waited and believed God and waited and it still ain't happened, it's not because God is not involved. He's the reason you've been able to wait this long. He's been giving you the grace in that place. He's been giving you the grace in that space. He's been giving you the grace in that case. He's been giving you the grace in that state. He's been giving you the grace to deal with everything in front of you. My closing point to you would be this. <laughs> and I like this. This goes back to Galatians 6 and 9. Because this says, Woo, don't grow weary in well doing. Keep doing good. For in the due season, you shall reap if you faint not. My closing point to you, my brother, my sister, is keep waiting, keep doing good. Because God has appointed you a season to reap. There's an appointed time for you to come into what God has in store for your life. He said it in his word in Galatians 6. He says, you shall reap if you don't lose heart. All the good you're doing Doing good can become hard, frustrating, sacrificing, giving up all the time, sharing your life and your love and your legacy with other people. Instead of being selfish and self-centered and all about you, it becomes hard giving all the time and being what people need you to be and giving of your money, your tithes and treasure and talent and sacrificing, letting people into your home and into your life. And Oh my God, I'm sick of Christianity! That's when God says, don't get sick of it. Don't get sick of me. Don't get sick of my ways. Don't get tired of my kingdom. Don't give up on my plan for your life. He says, I have appointed a season just for you, almost like a birthday. You should have felt that. You waiting to pray. You should have felt that. You were holding back on your prayer. You should have felt that. He's got a birthday, a season to reap, set aside just for you. Whatever that reap is, whether it's peace, whether it's power, whether it's prosperity, whether it's prominence, whether it's position, whether it's a platform, it doesn't matter. Whether it's a better prognosis, it doesn't matter. It's yours. Do you hear me? It's yours. Keep heart. It's yours. That vision, that hope, that thing, that promise, God, it's yours. Your season is coming. Your season of coming. Don't lose heart. And keep your hope alive. And God will bring you into reward for your faithfulness. If you're here today, if you're listening and Jesus Christ is not your Lord and Savior, now is the moment now is the time. Now is that one opportunity in this day. 
where the, 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 the heavens have opened up. And the Lord says, come to me now in your heart. And I will make of you a great nation. I will make of you a great people. I will give you eternal rest. I will give you eternal peace. I will give you. I will give you. Air. Joint airship with my son Jesus Christ. Trust me, God says. And come to me right now. Right now. Right now. Why don't you come right now? Accept Jesus in your heart. Backslider, accept. Accept that you're coming back to God. Man or woman who's sinner, who's outside the covenant of grace. I want you to step in right now. Lean into it right now. I want you to get out of your head. I want you to get out of your frustration. I want you to get out of your anger. I want you to come to God. I want you to run to the Lord. I want you to give yourself to I want you to I call you out of the dark place. Into the marvelous light. Come on, come on. Come on right now, right where you are. Right where you are. Right where you are. My life's not my own. That's what I want you to tell God. To you I belong. Come on, here's your opportunity. Give yourself away to him right now. Free your mind. Free your heart. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Just as I am. I'm broken. I'm broken. I'm mad. I'm hurt. I'm disenchanted with life. I'm suicidal. But I come to you just as I am. Right now. Just receive him into your heart. I feel the glory of God falling. I feel the glory of God falling. I feel the glory of God falling. I see a backslider crying right now. Weeping in repentance and coming back to God. Right now I see you. God sees you. Come on back to him right now. Come on back to him right now in the name of Jesus. Because he never forsaked you. He never forgot about you. He never gave up on you. If that's you today, I celebrate you. I celebrate you. If you accepted Jesus or came back to Jesus, listen, I want you to begin to praise him with the clapping of your hands right now, right where you are at home, right where you are. If you came to Jesus and gave your life to him, or if you were backslidden and you came back to God, Clap those hands in celebration and give him praise because I'm clapping with you. I'm clapping. I'm clapping with you. I'm clapping with you. I'm, I'm clapping with you. Today has been an amazing day, an amazing word. I told you before I started, this word was going to turn your week around and that your ladder whew, would be greater than your former. Oh, my God. Listen, I'm Apostle Jarrell Beard, and it's been a pleasure ministering this word of hope to you, this word of life, right where you are. I want you to thank God. I want you to praise him. I want you to bless him. Listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get into a Bible-believing church. New Direction can be your church. You can go online and fill out our e-church member form and connect with us. We have, we have people doing that. We want you to connect with us so you have a spiritual covering over your life to guide you. If you're backslidden, you need, a church, you need a church home now. New Direction Church, we want to be your family. Yes, we do. We don't matter about COVID-19. We want to be your family and intercede on your behalf and help guide you in the spiritual matters that God has in store for your life. Either way, we want you to be covered. Now I want you to go, and I want you to go to newdirectionchurches.org, and I want you to give like you've never given before. I want you to go to newdirectionchurches.org, and I want you to sow a seed of faith right now. Listen to me. A seed of faith right now. I don't want you to turn off your mind. I don't want you to turn off your heart right now. I don't want you to disconnect from what God has done in this moment. As you give, I want you to have that same faith, that same joy, that same inner peace that you got through this word. When you're giving, I want you to be in that same space. Come on, because all of it is worship. All of it is worship. Amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. Well, let's pray, and then I'll see you next week. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word that does not return void. We rejoice as we leave this space in your presence. Now, God, I pray this word, this word will be fermented in the heart of your people, and they keep hope alive and don't lose heart. We thank you. We praise you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Go be with God. I'll see you next time.